Hello. Yo. Amazing Spider-Man 2. Better than the first. Much better than the first. Um, wow. I, I'm actually surprised it was only like two hours long. It felt longer. It did, actually. They really stretched everything out. They crammed the right a lot of information in right in that, that uh, first, like, 90 minutes. Yes. It was... Goblin scene was too short, though. Yeah, I know. He was only on screen for, like, five minutes or so. He, I mean, he they injected the venom, me, and get venom, and then he just went Green Goblin. It was like, we saw the suit, they didn't really do much backstory behind him. Exactly. It's like, yeah, everybody knows Goblin, you know what I mean? It's like, there's really you know, no need for a backstory, but mm. there still should have been just a little bit more build-up or something more to the fight scene. It was way too simplistic. I know. Way too fast. Oh, and spoiler, Gwen does die. Yes, it's, it is a happy time, because Gwen must die. You, you, and, that's and your opinion. I've, I've always liked the Gwen character. She's always been... Mary Jane. Mary Jane, no, no, no. They have Mary been, Jane, done. No, Mary Jane There's has... There's only one woman for Spider-Man, done. I've always thought Gwen was the better suit for Peter, because she... she like, the personalities between uh, Mary Jane and Peter just... They don't seem to match well. I mean, the the, the chemistry... Yeah, still... The chemistry between these two characters... Redhead. I know, you're a, red, you're a redhead lover. But the chemistry between these two characters was so good. I mean, even the first yeah. one, the, chem, the the back and forth that uh, both Andrew Garfield and Emma Stone yeah. had was... You you believe them as a couple. It, it was very yes. believable. And that's a tribute to both their acting, because Emma Stone is a phenomenal actress. Absolutely, yes. Which actually, on the note of, of acting skills, Tobey Maguire, sorry. Yeah. Andrew Garfield is the clear yeah. I mean, Tony Plus, Maguire. the fact, like you said earlier, right before we were watching, it's like, he can do the joking and the, what you expect when you the, see the, Spider-Man. The, 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 the banter that he does with the yeah. villains. Like, uh, Tober, Toby had a little bit of that, but the, it, it came off too... Uh, more hardcore than Spider-Man is supposed to come no, I mean, like, as. uh... There was one scene I remember in the first Spider-Man um, when uh, the Green Goblin says, uh, time for you to get out, and, and, and Peter goes, uh, it's you who is out, Gobby, out of your mind, and it's it's, it's so campy. And I'm, and yeah. yeah, but this, with this, this the, the dialogue that Andrew Garfield does is believable, and it's actually funny. Exactly. It's not just like a badly written comic book character like the first Spider-Man movies. I mean, I like, I, always, I will always have a place in my heart for the first Spider-Man movies. Absolutely, but I I prefer the Spider-Man these ones because he he does really personify the one from the shows oh, and yeah, the comic absolutely. books, and design and all and the the personality and all that and to think there's gonna be at least there's gonna be a new Spider-Man movie every year. I'm, yeah. I'm not sure how they're gonna pull it off. I don't know. Although last scene the fucking uh, Rhino suit. Oh, that was really a bait, that was a well made. that was a bait and switch though. They they had him all over the covers and right from the trailers. Exactly. So it's like you knew he was going to be in there. At the same time, you knew he was only going to be in there for a minute. But I guess I guess they had to do it that way. Otherwise, it would have been just too overly clustered with villains. Yeah. Although honestly, I really not so sure. I'm liking how they decided to do the uh, the rhino suit. Yeah, I pre the whole. I, pre I prefer the 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 regular like it's a part of his skin type. Yeah, suit. I mean like, original rhino suit. It was. More bio than biomechan than mechanical. Yeah, because that way he actually fused to his skin. He couldn't physically take it off. It was which makes you wonder how he goes to the bathroom. Part of the suit, maybe. Maybe it's like one of those still... astronaut suits that like takes care of his piss or something. Magic. <laughs> Done. Magic, bitch. Anyways, but I really did ignoring that. I really did like how they set up the, the Rhino suit. I mean, come on, it has cannons and rocket launchers. True, it was pretty badass looking. I just, I just, it makes you think that it could just be used by anyone if it's done this way. Yeah, but they did mention that it is um, bonded by the um, the right. neuro or whatever. Oh yeah, the neuro. Uh, the, I forget what it was. Neuro suit or something and, like and that. And That's part was a, of it. So it and, might. And speaking know. of being used by everybody, they finally got rid of one glaring plot hole that always bugged me throughout each of them. The, from since the first movie, what was to prevent anybody else from getting Spider-Man powers from the other spiders? And then we found out that it's because his own dad's DNA was part of those spiders, so Absolutely. he could only use them. 
And yeah. that was one thing I was like, yes, yes, thank you. You put, you didn't need to put that in there, but you did. You did a great thing for the fans there. Absolutely, it's not. It's definitely. It's. It makes a lot of sense. It's just one of those. Okay, there we go. All is right with the world. Where'd my fucking hat go? I don't know. Uh, it was. I was. I was impressed. I'm. And Jamie Fox. Jamie Fox was phenomenal as Electro. Like, oh, absolutely. Like his really the backstory well. behind him, how he was like this geeky no name guy who nobody notices yes. and stuff. And that first introduction as Electro. Yeah. That has got to be one of the best villain introductions I have ever seen. Oh, absolutely. That was actually really well done. I was very... And that, and how you could hear in the music his inner thoughts about betrayal and stuff, if you really listened, yeah. it was... That was... The fight scene. I like the Tesla music. Oh, yes. That was awesome. I, I could actually see, see, like, Skrillex doing something with that. And yeah. It was it was awesome. I, I would have liked to see more of Electro. I would have liked to see that whole thing go further with like his psyche about feeling betrayed or something yeah, but then again this one kind of kicked off a lot of the new characters and a lot of how the rest of the rest of the movies can progress especially if they're trying to make one a year yeah it's true. that's pretty much gonna this is like a kickstart you know mm. first movie hey here's the new spider-man how do you like it second movie here's what's gonna happen then it's gonna Continue the story. I mean, I, I want to see Sinister Six, but there is if there's two characters I have wanted to see in Spider-Man movies done right, it is Venom and Carnage. Yes. The two best villains in the Spider-Man mythos. Yeah, I'd agree with that. I mean, Venom is just one of the most badass-looking creatures you will, villains you will ever see. And then you have Carnage. And Carnage is just pure Carnage. Don't you know who else needs to show up? Who? Somebody who... They hinted so strongly at by oh, Norman Osborn. No, I mean not Norman. Uh, uh, J. Jonah Jameson. No. Who? Black Cat. Oh yeah, Felicity. We met the, a woman named Felicity who was Norman Osborn's assistant. I thought, and the moment I heard her name, I was like, "Oh, there she is." Felicity Hardy. <sighs> and that's another character we wanted to see in Spider-Man is Felicity Hardy. The last thing I saw her in was that spectacular Spider-Man show, which was a really good Spider-Man yeah. show. And I, I hated how it ended so soon. But at least we got these new movies to launch it off and stuff. And oh, yeah, absolutely. I'm just afraid that if the if the movies come down come out every single year, the the quality's gonna drop. Honestly, I think with the way technology is is constantly increasing, I think the quality is gonna increase. Well, it's especially not... considering that everybody wants to watch Spider-Man, so therefore everybody's gonna pay to watch it. It's, it's not yeah. it's not that the technology; it's getting these actors together, getting a script uh, written out True. well enough. Because it, sometimes it could take years for a good script to be written out. True, but something tells me they probably have a couple of scripts already written. Well, they have the comic and books. They probably to... already filmed like three of the movies already. And they're just editing everything. Well, maybe they f filmed a few of the scenes, but I don't think they filmed all three of them yet. But, uh, yeah, they do have the comics to use as well, reference. Think about it. It's not like they have to change the scenery. It's not like they're changing countries or continents. It's Spider-Man. It's, it's, it's always New York. City. It's always New York. Exactly. So The only time we ever got a difference from New York was when he was like in outer space and crap. I, I can't remember that story. Like, that was like the 90s Spider-Man. That was Venom. That, that was actually... No, no, no Venom is... I'm talking about, uh, you wouldn't know because you didn't watch the original 90s cartoon. I, I watched every single Spider-Man thing I ever made. Even the Neil Patrick Harris one? Yes. And good for you. And uh, Spider-Man is, I'm, I was surprised because I... That brings another character to mind, another villain. Oh. The one vampire guy. Oh yeah, oh, what's his name? Um, Mor Morbius. 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 Uh, but I'm not sure how they're going to work that in. I, I could see that if they do like a Blade movie, if they make another Blade movie series and they try and tie it in together. But as well, it Blade is... Blade is Marvel. I yeah, I know, exactly. But I mean, the only time we've seen that is the cartoon with the with with uh, Morbius. Yeah. Ooh. <sighs> they need to make a remake uh, Punisher, though. I've heard they're already in the works for that. I hope so. It better not be a continuation of Warzone, though. I did not watch that. Mm -hmm. I refuse to watch that. And we have what we have X Men Days of Future Past coming out at the end of the yes, month. Absolutely. I really want to see that, even though I never saw First Class. Mm, and first Class is actually really good. But it is? It's a little bit of a disappointment, in my opinion. Yeah, I've I've heard they that. They downplay a lot of the characters a lot. I've heard that, and and we have Avengers two coming out at Age of Ultron. Yes, I've wanted to see. I've, I really want. I know 
Well, uh, we're, we're getting too far away from the movie itself. But yeah. The movie Spider very well, very well, very good. Very well, really well acted. The script could be kind of a mess sometimes, but they did tie it together really well. Yeah, they did bounce around a little bit, but again, tied it in really well. I agree. But as a standalone movie. It was really good. Like, Absolutely. It, especially if you're a Spidey fan. If you're a Spidey fan, you will love this one. You will love this movie. Oh, yeah. And I, I, I just can't wait until they introduce Venom. He is my favorite Spider-Man villain ever. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I mean, I was Green disappointed Goblin, when they I mean. did Topher Grace yeah. for fucking Venom back in Spider-Man 3. <sighs> he did not look like the part of Venom. And we only saw yeah. him for like 10 minutes on screen. Pretty much, I mean... Man, and then we heard. Remember how we heard there was supposed to be a spinoff movie of Venom after that? Yeah. And then it got canceled. It never, it never happened. Because, and then they decided to just reboot it's the series. Venom was complete shit. Yeah, exactly. Topher Grace. I mean, I, I I like Topher Grace as an actor. As a villain, nah, nah, not so much. Who would you pick to play Venom? Well, it has to be somebody who's who's somewhat brawny, but not too like stupid looking. Yeah. I know who would play Carnage. Who? Neil Patrick Harris. Oh, oh, that's a good one. That is a good one. Um, you know who actually might make a good Ven Venom? Who I sometimes don't like his acting out, but he could do a good Venom. Shane Tatum. Mm. Shane fucking Tatum. He, he yeah. as long as he does, they, they, he works on his acting with his speaking roles because he's not the best actor. He's more, yeah. like, more of a good face and muscle to look at, but. If he's if he's just given a few ro lines of dialogue with the Venom symbiote, it, it should be good. Oh yeah, it's oh my god, this movie was pretty good. I I'm surprised it was only I thought it was like three hours long, but it was only two. Yeah. Uh but we're gonna try and be back. Uh, was it two weeks from now for Godzilla? Yes. Godzilla. 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 I hope it's I hope it's better than Matthew Broderick version. I mean. I kind of have a, that's kind of a, what is it what's called, a guilty pleasure of mine, because I was only like seven years old when I saw it, so. I, I'm honestly, that was that movie was actually really well done, but they never continued it. They always suggested, hey, we're going to make a sequel. No. Oh, no, they did continue it in the animated series. Hmm, which I never watched. It wasn't very good. I heard there was only like ten episodes of that. It was, it was like twelve, and it wasn't very good. Yeah. As long as they make this, and they, in fact, they have Brian Cranston in it, steps up and, but, yeah, day, we got Godzilla, we got Maleficent, we got Days of Future Past, and Stars unfortunately, you got to be, well, is that this month? I want to say yes. All right, and then, Maybe unfortunately, like you have to go away. Maybe I can get, like, Jordan or somebody to come with me, because I want to yeah. keep, but what would you give this, this movie a rating of as a Spider-Man movie? Hmm... Based off of all the other Spider-Man movies, I would say it's probably about mm, eight. Uh, I'll give it a little bit. I'll give it a little bit of grievance. I'll give it an eight and a half. Cause it wasn't perfect. Like the script need work some here and there, and the but the acting was phenomenal, especially the re relationship between Emma Stone and Andrew Garfield. But it, yeah. it was. It, they did the best they can within the short amount of time they had to to set up the rest of the, the films. Yeah, absolutely. And I really am looking forward to the next one. I'm looking forward to Godzilla. Godzilla. Yes. And anyway, guys, uh, see you next time. That's that's it. Catch you later. Am I doing rocker symbol or spider web? I oh, that should be spider. I'm spraying you. I'm spraying you with the spider web to cover up the screen. Tss.